Have you ever dreamed of living in Japan but thought it was financially out of reach? Today I'm going into my income in Japan and all of the expenses I have living in Anakia. The truth is surprising and it might change your assumptions about the cost of living in Japan. I really hope you can stick around to the end for the full breakdown. I can't believe it's been one year since I moved to Japan and bought an Akia and started teaching English here. So no beating around the bush, my earnings per month are 173,564 yen. I'm paid hourly and some months are better than others due to things like school holidays and national holidays. So let's go into all the expenses one by one and work out how on earth I afford to live here in Japan. My biggest two bills are my pension and health insurance. I recently went into City Hall to deliver my updated yearly income statement. For my first year in Japan, I was lucky enough to receive an exemption on paying my pension um, because I had such small earnings, but I'm going to have to start paying the pension from this year. My yearly pension is 16900 a month and my health insurance is 7400 per month. You might have noticed I'm doing all the boring things first. So next up is insurance and I have two insurances. They are my house insurance and my car insurance. I go to this place called Hoken no Madoguchi and it's like a compare the market shop and I found them to be really user friendly and they helped me through some really heavy documents. Because of earthquakes in Japan, I've taken the maximum insurance I can on my house. I don't want to bore you with all the details, but if you have any burning questions about these things, please leave them in the comments. For my internet and telephone, I use a company called SoftBank. I've got unlimited Wi-Fi for my internet and I just have a light plan for my telephone because I don't make too many telephone calls. When I bought the Akia, I found out that my hot water system runs on kerosene and it was working fine. So I thought there was no reason to change the system out. I bought a couple of containers to go and collect kerosene. It's cheaper if you go and get it yourself. It's 97 cents a liter at the place I go to. I just got a couple of small containers because otherwise it's too heavy for me to carry on my own. So moving on next is my electricity bill and I've been working really hard to not get bill shock here. On the really cold days, I've been using this hot carpet. So I'm just cleaning all of this up now because the weather has warmed a fair bit. But in the carpet, I put down insulation just to try and keep the heat in and not waste any energy. Millie has certainly left a lot of surprises for me under this carpet, so I need to give it a good clean. I have a summer rug which I've been using upstairs in the office so I'm just going to swap it out for the winter rug and then I'll swap it back when it gets cold again. I'm also looking for a coffee table and I found this one on Nitori but I just can't afford it as you know, you know my income now. So I'm going to head off to the second hand shop and just see if they have maybe one there that's cheaper, you just never know your luck. so. Come along with me and we'll go see if we can find something. Well, they didn't have exactly what I'm looking for. This thing looks a bit like an ironing board, but it has the right legs. And I think that could work perfectly if I could somehow change the tabletop. And I'm starting to get an idea that I could possibly make this into something great. I did buy a set of tools when I bought the house because I knew I'd have to do some renovations, so I may as well use them. I am in luck and I found some beautiful Japanese cedar at my local hardware store and it fits perfectly in my car so I can take it home in one piece. So the tabletop was 1,600 yen and the two pieces of timber were 1,000 yen each. So all up, it's going to cost me 4,000 yen, which is about 10% of the cost of a new one. I 
for me it's really satisfying being able to make something yourself and being able to save money someone once said i was cheap but i like to say i'm just frugal and i don't like wasting money if i can buying this akia didn't happen because i was lucky it happened because I saved really hard. I worked really hard and I was very frugal with my money to be able to save up enough to do this. So now that I'm living in Japan, I am on a much lower income than what I had in Australia. I've really made myself think outside the square and try and come up with different solutions to achieve the things I want to achieve. There is a sense of satisfaction trying to make it work and trying to live within a budget. I'm guessing that happiness isn't something that money can buy, it's something that you make with your own hands. I think this coffee table has turned out okay in the end. What do you think? So back to the expenses and next up is electricity. On average, I'm paying 3,000 yen per month. It was a little bit higher in December and January because I had lots of family and friends come to visit. It's great being able to track my usage in the apps. It really keeps your finger on the pulse. Next up is gas and I only pay 2,500 per month because I only use it for cooking. My water bill averages out to 2,000 yen per month. And I pay 1,000 yen per month for my servicing on the septic system. And for that, he comes three times a year to make sure everything is working fine. I have an entertainment budget of about 5,000 yen per month. And if you watched my Lonely in Japan video, you know I've started making some new Japanese friends here. And it's really important for me to foster those friendships and always say yes if I'm asked out anywhere. There are also plenty of opportunities that don't cost money. One of my high school students gave me a ticket to come see his concert, which I did. Another student also told me about the Wakayama Sakura Matsuri, which is their cherry blossom festival, so I've come to check that out as well. For petrol in my car, I spend about 3,000 yen per month. I do love things that are free or low cost and my local dump is free. So come along to the dump with me. I've got to get rid of that tabletop and I'll show you how a dump in Japan works. <laughs> If you are buying an Akia, it's good to find out what your local city charges to dump rubbish. Here at the Wakayama dump, they weigh your car on the way in and then again on the way out. You're allowed 100 kilograms per trip. You also have to divide your rubbish into categories. Today, my rubbish is in the category of furniture. The people at the dump have gotten to know me, so they're very, very friendly. I can say I've been here a few times now. My next big expense is my grocery bill. I'm trying to keep it under 20,000 yen per month. That's proving a little bit difficult. Today's a good example of what I would normally buy on a shop. Today I'm getting something for a couple of dinners, a few breakfasts and a few lunches. It is definitely cheaper than eating out and it's definitely cheaper than going to the convenience store. So often cook a meal for two or three and put the rest in the fridge for the next day. 
Compared to Australia, I definitely think the groceries are a lot cheaper here in Japan. Check out the price of this Chuhai. It's actually 98 yen. That's cheaper than water. A couple of other bills that I need to mention. Um, one of them is my car rego. So that's called Shaken here. And that one is due every two years. So I haven't actually had a shaken yet, but it will be due in one year's time. So assuming all is well with the car, I really need to budget around 100,000 yen for this cost. The next bill that I will need to think about is my yearly rates bill. So again, this is something that I haven't had to pay yet. The real estate agent estimated that this would be around 30 to 50,000 yen for the year. And one last thing that I want to talk about is my NISA account. So in Japan, there is a thing called a Nippon Individual Savings Account. It's a tax exempt government investment account. And I pay in 20,000 yen from my salary into my NISA account. I guess it's a sort of forced savings account. And then there is Millie. So Millie is costing me around 2,500 yen per month. And this includes two bags of kitty litter, her dry food and her wet food. I feel weird about putting a price on Millie because I just love her so much. So here is the total breakdown of my expenses versus income. Any money that I have left over is in my maintenance fund for anything that might crop up with the house. Living in Japan has been a dream of mine for a while and I've found through this YouTube channel I've been able to connect to other people who also have the same thoughts. Thank you so much for all your support and encouragement along the way. Thank you for leaving a like and a comment. I really appreciate the way it's helping get my videos out to more people. And a huge thank you and shout out to those who've been supporting me with coffees. I really, really appreciate that. I look forward to talking to you in the next video. See ya.